Good morning, Calvary. So good to see you today. Thanks for being here. Welcome those of you. We've got a full house here in the Sanctuary and Auditorium 1 today. We've also got a full house over in Auditorium 2. I was just over there, and uh, so welcome to those of you over there as well. You can clap for them if you want to. Yeah, that was, that's awesome. And want to welcome those of you that are joining us online or maybe by way of television or the podcast. So glad that you are here today. You know that we have been working our way through the book of Matthew. Anybody remember that? Started about a year ago, and we're all the way to chapter 7, and uh, we are cruising, um, and we're going to fall further behind, because we're going to take a little break today. Turn with me to Psalm 20, if you will, please. Psalm 20 in your Bibles, whether you have it in a print or a digital form. I read this passage of scripture, uh, I don't know, it was several weeks ago, I suppose, and just in my regular, and I want to encourage you, if you don't have a regular kind of daily strategy for how you read God's word, find it. If it's a verse a day, if it's a chapter a day, whatever it might be, well, what do I do if I miss a day? Pretend you didn't and just pick up where you should the next. But if you miss one, don't miss two, right? And there's something powerful about regularly being in God's word. And I'm sure I've read Psalm 20 before, but it was as if I never had. And I read it, and it just grabbed me. And I thought to myself, I need to, I need to pray this psalm. My first thought was, I want to pray this for my family. It's a psalm of blessing where they're asking for God's presence and God's favor. And I thought, oh, I want to pray this for my family. And then I thought, oh, I want to pray this for the church. And then I, I got in a couple of situations where I was talking with a friend, and I, I, I text these verses, or I, or I read them to a friend. I said, hey, can I read this passage of Scripture to you? Because they were in difficult times. It beca- it's become, in the last few weeks, kind of almost like a spiritual tool for me, this, this passage of, of God's blessing. And I even thought to myself, I wonder if I should preach this. We're in the book of Matthew. I'll, just, I'll put it in the hopper for some other time. But it was this powerful passage of Scripture. And then, yesterday, I was in that, that place. You know how when you're in that place where you're not awake yet, but you're not really asleep yet? Do you know what I'm talking about? So yesterday morning, and the, the, the tech folks hate it when I do this because I walk out of the light. So I apologize to those of you online. I'm going to look a little creepy here for just a minute. But I had a dream as I was waking up. And in my dream, I came up these stairs right here. And I could, I could see I was walking to this point and in my dream, I just felt it so clearly. Don't, pre- what you, don't preach what you were going to preach. Preach Psalm 20. I just knew it so clearly. And it was like, okay, as I made these steps, I'm changing what I'm going to preach. And I just knew that God had this for us for today. Now, I don't share that with you to kind of be like, it's not like super spiritual kind of thing. Because just so you know, every dream is not from the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. Sometimes you shouldn't have watched that. Sometimes you shouldn't have ate that. Sometimes you have these dreams that aren't from the Lord. But sometimes they might be. And when they are, listen to them. The other reason I share that is not to be or hyper spiritual. The other reason I share that is because this is a passage of scripture that I think is good for all of us to read and go, I wanna pray that over my life. I wanna pray that over my family. I want to pray that over my situation, but some of you need that today. For some of us, it's timeless. For you, it might be timely, and if it's for you today, I think God wanted you to know you can't escape from it. He's got your number. He knows where you are, and he wants you to hear this psalm today. So let's jump right in. Psalm 20, verse 1. We're going to kind of read through it, make some observations as we go. Psalm 20, verse 1. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Can you see why this is a good thing to pray? You know anybody in distress? Anybody come to mind? This might be good to pray for them. Here's what we get here. It says it's a psalm of David. We don't know exactly when it was that David wrote it or when they sang it, when they read it, when it was proclaimed. What we do assume is this, that this is a psalm that a king and his people, we don't know if it's the army, we don't know if it's leaders, we don't know if it's just the population, we just know a king and his people are praying this psalm. They're praying this psalm as they are facing an impending battle. They have a battle that's coming their way. 
They're facing a challenge. They're facing a struggle. And so the king and his people come together. We assume that it was probably early in David's reign when he was facing some real challenges as he was establishing the kingdom that God was giving to him. And he prays this prayer for impending battle. Here's what I want you to see about Psalm 20. If I had to title this message, here's what it would be. Psalm 20 is a blessing for battle. Psalm 20 is a blessing for battle. And all of us face moments of challenge, of struggle, of opposition, spiritual warfare, pressure, stress. Sometimes as soon as I say battle, you go, oh, well, that's negative. Not necessarily. Have you noticed that anytime you grow, anytime you take ground, there's some struggle attached to it? Anybody? And so there's a blessing that's here in this passage of Scripture for battle. I I don't know what you're facing. It could be as simple as you're taking your exams to wrap up this semester You got a big project at work. You got a lot on your to-do list. Or it could be that it feels like someone's out to get you. Or you have to make some tough decisions. You, You have struggles with your family. You're worried about your health. Your past is haunting you. You have intense spiritual struggle that you're in the middle of. I'll ask you this question and don't don't just let it float right past you. Where's your battle right now? Like, what's the battle that you're facing? This week, as you walk into this week, let's pull something from the New Testament. Where is it that you need to put on the full armor of God? Like, what's the battle that you are facing right now in your life? Because whatever it is, there's a blessing for you. What do we mean by blessing? There's multiple passages in Scripture where they just have this sense where people are praying for themselves. They might be praying for an individual. They might be praying for a group. And I think that applies here in this passage where they're praying for someone to know the blessing of God in their lives, his favor, his presence with them. Probably the most famous of all of these we find in Numbers chapter 6, Numbers 6, verse 24. You know this one. This is the the prayer that God gives to the priests to pray over the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. You ever heard that one before? So we, we know that passage. In fact, we sing that passage sometimes, don't we? We know that song. Psalm 20 has the same kind of vibe to it, if you will, the same kind of feeling of blessing. Seven times in the first five verses, you're going to hear the psalmist say, may, like a pronunciation of blessing, may this happen, may that happen in someone's life. And at the beginning of this passage in verse one, you read this line that says, the name of the God of Jacob would protect you. In our day and time, we may be prone to say, who's Jacob and why is that there? We also know that 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 term God of Jacob kind of sounds Old Testament-like and is probably just talking about God, but there's more to it than that. Like it's there for a reason. When you say the God of Jacob, it's kind of a shortening, it's kind of a shorthand for a term that you'll see in the Old Testament that he is the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And so sometimes we just shorten it and say he's the God of, we take everything out of the middle and we say Jacob. But when they heard that, it was more than just some Old Testament title. They would think back to passages of scripture like Exodus chapter 19, where it says Moses went up to God And the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, this is what you are to say to the descendants of, oh, yeah, I thought you guys were listening. This is what you are to say to the descendants of, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. So this ties you back to Jacob, right? He says, you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. God says, remind those people that I'm the God of Jacob and that when they were in distress, when they were in trouble, when they needed deliverance, I showed up and I was there. Sometimes it's good. We remember the victories God has won in the past. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to look back and remember the victories that God won in the past. Even if you feel far from him today, you can still look back and see his faithfulness. You can see the times that he was there. The times that he brought the right thing at the right time. The times his grace was there. I found myself this week, I was thinking back, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, to a time when, make a long story short, God miraculously provided for Calvary. Like, it was this amazing, amazing thing that God provided for us, and I just looked back, and I literally thought to myself when I was remembering it this week, I thought to myself, that was so incredible, it was probably a a once-in-a-lifetime thing. And I felt like the Lord said, oh, is that right? You think that's all I got? 
That's the only bullet I got in my gun? That's the only trick up my sleeve? No. Chad, if you'll trust me, the God who did miraculous things in the past can do miraculous things in the future. So sometimes we have to remember when we're in these moments, the victories that God brought in the past. Before we jump into the rest of Psalm 20, let me show you one other quick thing here that's good for us to remember. Remember that they are praying this before the battle, not after it. Like they're praying this blessing before they actually get fighting and they're believing for victory. Look, we believe for blessing even when we are still in the battle. It's not once we get our hands on the trophy. It's not once the enemies are retreating. We're asking and believing for blessing when the arrows are flying and the punches are throwing. And we believe that God is there through those times and we believe him for blessing. So you might ask the question when you read Psalm 20, who is this blessing for? I'm glad you asked. And let's look at these different verses and see who this blessing is for. Let's start here, Psalm 20, verse 2. The blessing is this. He says, may God send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. This is a blessing for those who need strength. What we see here in this passage is a blessing for those who need strength. It has this picture where he says, may God come and help you from his sanctuary. May God show up from Zion. They're painting this picture where the temple is, where the sanctuary is, where the Ark of the Covenant would be. Have you ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? When Israel would go out into battle, one of the things that they would do in the, in the first part of the Old Testament is they would go out, and Indiana Jones, I mean, the, the Israelites would carry the Ark of the Covenant with them out into battle, it was a physical symbol that God's presence was with them. And so the psalmist says, God is going to show up out of his fortress, and he is going to come and he's going to defend you. I think Hollywood has wrecked me. But when I read that, you know the picture I get when you're in the middle of a battle, and all of a sudden the Millennium Falcon shows up. And you're like, help is on the way. That's what he's saying here. And he says, when God shows up, he will support you. That word support has the idea that he would give you strength. We won't take the time, but you, you can see over and over and over and over again in just the Psalms where that word for support or that word for strength shows up. And it says, well, God will give you strength when you feel like your footing has slipped. And God will give you strength when you feel like you can't sustain, when you can't persevere, when you can't hold on any longer. And God will give you strength when you need deliverance. I just wanna show you one of those today because we're gonna pray here in a little while. We're gonna do maybe a little bit different than a normal Sunday morning. I want you to see this. Psalm 41, verse three. Psalm 41, verse three says the Lord sustains them. That's the same word that we see for support. That's the same word that we see for strength, that God sustains them on their sick bed and restores them from their bed of illness. And one of the things that's good for you to see is that God gives strength for healing. Do you believe that? That God gives strength for healing. I don't know why these last few weeks I've just sensed that Our healer wants to heal. That God wants to bring healing to some of our lives, not just so we can be free from pain or over that sickness, but so that through a miraculous touch from him, he can show others who he is, that they will believe in him, and that when he is lifted up, he will draw people to himself. Our healer wants to heal. And he has the strength to do that. We we call on that. This is the biblical picture that's here. And I believe that in a few moments in this room, in auditorium too, those of you that may be watching or listening to this somewhere else, if you need a touch of healing, I believe our healer is in the healing business and he can work in our lives, which, which takes us then back to Psalm 20. So we've, we've looked at verse two. Let's jump back in. Who else is this blessing for? Let's look at it. Psalm 20, verse three, this blessing, it says, may he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. An interesting line here, may he remember your sacrifices and may he accept your burnt offerings. Who's this blessing for? I think this blessing is a blessing for those who are weary. 
It is a blessing for those who are weary. When the king would go out to battle, not just the Israelite king, but this was true in, in all of the nations in the ancient Near East. Before they would go out to battle, one of the things that they would do is they would offer sacrifices to whatever their god was. Now, we know that all the other nations offered sacrifices to false gods who fell apart and fell through. True? But Israel had offered to the one true God. And they would offer this sacrifice. It was an act of worship. It was an act of commitment. It was an act to say, God, we trust you in this. And we do the same thing. We offer ourselves to the Lord. We find ways to show our love to him. If I had to describe it, I would say we, we sacrifice with worshipful faith. We sacrifice with a worshipful faith that says, God, I trust in you. God, I put my confidence in you. God, I look to you. And we do this when we offer our sacrifices to him. We do it when we give out of our resources because he has led us to sacrifice or worship with our money. We do it when we serve him with our talents and abilities. We bless others with our time. We sing and worship when we come together. We read our Bibles in, our, in, in, a, in a secret place and pray to him. Do you remember that in, in Matthew chapter six where it talked about the things we do, not publicly, but that we do in secret when we pray and when we fast and when we give, we offer those sacrifices to the Lord and we worship him with this, we sacrifice with this worshipful faith and say, God, I give these things to you but here's the reality. Some of you have made sacrifices and you're still waiting on the victory. What did that passage say? The passage said, remember. May, may God remember your sacrifices and accept your offerings. When do you have to remember? When you're prone to forget. And when are you prone to forget? When it feels like it had no power to make any difference. Have you ever been there? Where you said, God, I prayed about this. And God, I've tried to live the right way. God, I thought I was doing the right things. God, I thought it was gonna be different. God, don't you, don't you see everything that we've done? And then it still feels like you're in the midst of a battle. It's in those moments when you're prone to forget that you have to stop to remember and it says that God will remember your sacrifices. Look, th this is not just a reason we sacrifice for worshipful faithfulness. Can I tell you this? We sacrifice with, with this patient expectancy because we expect and believe that even though we don't always see what we thought we would see, that God will come through, that God will show up. Look at this passage of scripture, Galatians chapter six, verse nine. Galatians six, nine says this. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if, we read, read this with me, if we do not give up. He says, don't be weary in doing good. And some of us have become weary. We've prayed prayers and we're waiting on answers. And we've tried to do the right things and we're not seeing that come through the way that we thought we would. And some of us have shed a lot of tears. Tears over our family. Tears over disappointment. And we're going out into that battle and saying, God, this is not the way that I thought it was going to be. And he says, will you, will you remember these sacrifices? God, will you honor in those places? And Paul answers us and says, there's going to be times when you're going to wonder, when you're going to be weary, when you'll want to give up. And he says, let us not become weary in doing good. Don't give up on the praying. D don't quit the crying out. Don't give up because you shed some tears. Because in, in the right time, in the proper way, we're going to reap a harvest if we do not give up. But what does Scripture say? Scripture says that those who sow in tears will reap with, anybody, joy. And sometimes if you're weary, if you're crying those tears, don't give up in the battle. There's a design school in the Netherlands that asks its students to present different projects and uh, there was a, a student from another country, so she moved there, she was in a different language, she's trying to learn all these things, she, it's a very competitive environment, and it was a lot of pressure, and she had these moments, and she was very ashamed of it, she had these moments where in front of some of the other students, in front of some of the faculty, she just broke down and started to cry. And it came time for them 
to do this project, this design project that they had to give. And so when uh, showed up at the exhibition of the projects, here's what she had. She had designed this little pouch that sits right under your eye and it's ad- 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 adhesive to your, your face there right under your eye. And when you cry your tears, it catches your tears. And then your tears go down a tube. And that tube is connected to this little gun. And when, yeah, me too. And when the tears, I couldn't believe it. When the tears go in the gun, they freeze. And they become little pellets that they, you can shoot at the people who made you cry. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now they just freeze. They're just like little tiny pieces of hail that you can shoot at somebody else. But that sounds like victory to me, anybody? Don't waste your tears. Weaponize them. There's a spiritual principle there. Your weeping is a weapon. And when you, when you sow in tears, the Bible says you're going to reap in joy. So do not become weary because you think what you're doing is not producing the fruit you want it to. At the proper time, there will be a harvest if you do not give up. So hang on through that battle and trust that God is gonna help you in those moments. He will be with you if you're crying. Let your weeping be a weapon and do not give up. There is a blessing for the weary. Who else is this blessing for? It's for those who need strength. It's for the weary. But look at this, Psalm 20 verse four says this. I love this one. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. I believe this is a blessing for those who are dreaming for those who are looking for victory, for those who have things that God has put in your heart. And again, like we said, anytime you're gonna take ground, there's a struggle. Anytime you're gonna move forward, you might have to fight a battle. And this is a blessing for those who are dreaming. Let me ask you two questions. What are your heart's desires? What are the things that you feel are in you as the desires of your heart? Can you answer that? Or is there something that comes to mind? If you had to sit with a pen and paper and list some things for, for your life, for your family, your career, maybe the season of life that you're in, or maybe the one you're, you're about to enter into, your future, your calling, what are the desires of your heart? Uh, I, I don't know, Chad. How am I supposed to know? Well, look at this. Psalm 37 uses that same language. Look at this. Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. That word loses me a little bit. Safe pasture. Because I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with something. If you have sheep and that's your livelihood and you have bandits and bad guys and bad animals who could come and destroy your flock, don't you want your pasture to be safe? Yes or no? You better believe it. So look at this blessing. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. When you focus on him, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It starts when we look to him. He'll fill you with those desires, and then he'll, he'll help you to see them fulfilled in your life. My, my questions are, like, what are your heart's desires, and where are you seeking success? Because this blessing says that he will make your plans succeed. Where is it that you're seeking success? Because if you're making plans, don't forget Proverbs 16.3. Proverbs 16.3, kind of using the same language, says commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. If you want to see your plans succeed, you got to work hard. you got to be committed. you got to endure. All those things that we talk about you, you read the self-help books. You read the leadership books. You do all those things. Like, that's important. But if that's all you do, you'll never know true success. Like, if you really want to find fulfillment, peace, reward, true prosperity, answers, real success, you know where it starts? It starts when you say, God, I surrender this to you. Not just my own plans, but yours. I, I, if we had time, I could sit and tell you, Story after story after story in my own life. Everything from just the weekly preparation of a, of a sermon to present to back when we were moving to church 12 years ago. That these moments where you can work hard and you can do whatever you need to do, but at some point you just have to say, God, this is in your hands. And that's when things started to move. 
That's when true success started to come. And that's the blessing that he wants to bring to you and to me as we trust him and as we look to him over and over again. We gotta keep moving. Who's this blessing for? It's for those who need strength and for those who are weary. It's for those who are dreaming. Here's the next one, verse five, Psalm 20, verse five. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. This one gets down to the nitty gritty. This is just a blessing for those who are waging war. Right, we call this a blessing for battle, and some of you feel like you're in a battle. And if you're waging war of some kind, in your home, in your mind, in the workplace, as, as, as you spiritually move forward, whatever it might be, this is a blessing for those of you that feel like you're in some kind of a battle. And can I tell you this, don't forget this, this is a blessing for before and during the battle, not just after. David doesn't have a trophy in his hand here. He's saying this in faith because he believes that God is the one who will bless. So that's key why he does what he does. He says, may we shout for joy over your victory. See, our mouth declares what our heart believes. So even before they were in battle, they were already shouting hallelujah to the Lord. They were already declaring victory. If you need some help in moving forward in the victory in the midst of battle, here's something to keep in mind. Our mouth declares what our hearts believe. Even when life is not what we want, even when things aren't going the way we want them to, in those moments, we still, and it's so powerful when we do, speak out the truth that God is good, that he's in control, and our trust is in him. I, I, I tell this story probably, I think I tell it about once a year, because I need to think about it about once a week. But when I was just, I don't know, maybe two years into being a pastor, I can remember I was on the front row at the church in Milwaukee where Rhonda and I served, and we had a, a, another individual who was on our staff named John Wanamaker. Pastor Wanamaker had to be in, what, his late 70s probably at that time. He was this tall kind of mountain of a man. He was a legend in that community. He had pastored so faithfully for so long, and now he was on staff at the church we were at and kind of part-time doing some pastoral care and some different things. And every time I was around him, it was a lesson in how to love Jesus better. And I remember we were standing there on the front row and the worship pastor started doing this song that was catchy but had terrible theology. Have you ever heard one of those? Like, and everybody liked it because it got you going, you were excited. But I always remember thinking, I don't, I just, that song just doesn't do it for me. Like, I just, I just didn't care for it. I didn't like it. And all of a sudden, as we started singing this song, Pastor Wanamaker threw both hands up in the air and with his barrel of a voice, he goes, I will bless the Lord at all times put his hands down, leaned over to me and said, I've never really cared for this song. <laughs> and it was such a lesson. Because sometimes life's gonna send you things you just don't like. And you know what you do in those moments? You throw your head back and your hands up and you go, I will bless the Lord at all times. Because it helps your heart. And sometimes I've gotta convince myself of the things I think I believe, anybody? And sometimes the only way I believe it is if I hear it out of this mouth. Our mouth will declare what our hearts believe. And some of you in the midst of your battle just need to stop listening to every other voice and just say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And then this psalm says that we will we'll raise our banners. Well, what does that mean? Like back in that time, remember the military didn't have GPS and radios. If they were going to communicate in battle, if people needed to know what their positions were and where they were supposed to be, they would raise a banner. And when that banner went up, it said, this is where I need to go. I know what I need to do. I know who I'm supposed to be with, and it's time for us to move. And they said, we're going to raise our banners, and we're going to go out, and we're going to fight this battle, and we're going to believe for victory. Look, sometimes if you're going to be victorious, if you're going to have blessing in the battle, you got to get moving. Faith-filled action is a statement of faith. And saying, God, I trust in you, so I'm getting moving. Because oftentimes in a battle, our tendency, instead of moving, is just, oh, this is tough. I'm having a bad day. I have a lot of bad days. And we just mope and we moan and we sit in that spot. And sometimes if you want to see God's blessing in the midst of your battle, you need to stop moping, start marching, and get moving. And believe that God's going to follow through and help you. That he'll bring comfort in your grief. That he's going to bring peace in your chaos. 
He's gonna bring strength in your weakness, that he can bring peace, that he can bring his presence, even to the things that just fill you with anxiety and dread. And just believe that even in the midst of this place where I'm waging war, God will help me. It's a blessing for battle. Go, go back to verse five again, because I want to show you the end of this here. Uh, Psalm 20, verse five. May we shout for joy over your victory and then lift up our banners in the name of our God. And there's like a little pause. And David, we assume the king, says, may the Lord grant all your requests. It's a good blessing, isn't it? But I'm praying for strength. God, I'm weary, and I'm dreaming in the midst of this battle. And the king says, may the Lord grant all your requests. I'm not the king. I'm not the king. I pretend to be at home. I'm not the king. <laughs> but I love that blessing. And then the psalmist gives us more to read. Psalm 20, verse 6. Let me read you through verse 9. It says, now I know this. The Lord gives victory to his anointed, and he answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. And some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And they're brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Do you know what that is there? That's a blessing for us all. Anybody take it? I'll take that blessing now, I want, you to, I want you to see something there. Go back to verse six, just those first few words. Verse six of, of Psalm 20 says this. Now I know this, and it stops. You know what scholars think? Scholars think something shifted there, that those first five verses were the king, and that the king was praying this over his people, that they were offering this before they went out into battle, and then all of a sudden there's like this little pause, and they think that somebody else probably shifted into the conversation here and said, now hang on, hang on a time out. I want to show you something I've learned. I want to share something with you that, that I think you should know. He says, now I know this. Who do they think it is? Now, they're not sure, but if you compare this with other scriptures, especially in like the book of 1 Chronicles, it seems that there would be a moment that after the, the king would give a blessing, then one of the Levites, the Levites were the tribe out of whom the priests would come, that one of the people who was leading the congregation in worship would affirm what the king had just said. And so the king has pronounced this blessing, and almost prophetically then, the priest comes up and says, hey, can I, can I share something with you? Can I tell you what I'm confident of? Can I tell you what I know and what I've come to learn? I'm not the king, but kind of like to think that I've got a little Levite in me. And I feel almost prophetically that God wants some of you to hear this today, that with confidence, you know what verse six says here. Psalm 20, verse six, now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed, and he answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Can I tell you, he has anointed us for victory. And if you are not in the midst of a battle, then that might not strike you right between the headlights as it does if you are. But some of you sitting in this room, joining us in auditorium too, watching or listening somewhere else in the world, when you heard he has anointed you for victory, you said, thank you, Lord, because that's what I need. God, I need your help in this. I need you to step in. Me, Chad, anointed? I'm not the king. Why would I be anointed? Because God has already promised that anointing is his blessing that comes, that he will give you everything you need through the power of his Holy Spirit. Has he not? I read it in Acts 1.8 where it says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And he will give you power to be his witness, to accomplish everything that he's called for you to do. He has anointed you for victory. But then watch this verse seven. See what it says here, where it says in, in Psalm 20, verse seven, it says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We might not fully get the meaning behind that, but the idea behind that was this. That they didn't have... Um, modern weapons of warfare like we have today. But their horses and chariots kind of played the role of, of nuclear weapons and drones in those ancient times. And if you had horses and you had chariots, then you had a strategic advantage over those other armies, those other militaries that might just have soldiers with spears out on a flat plain. 
And if those horses with chariots went barreling into that army who did not have them, they would scatter them all over. They would, if they didn't get run over, they would run for their lives, which made it really easy for the troops coming up behind to just attack as they ran and as they were shattered and as they struggled. So what a king would want was horses and chariots. That's where they put their trust. And the psalmist says, no, 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 no. We don't put our trust in the things we can see. Where our trust is in is in our Lord, our God, and that he will not fail us. And even if it seems like the enemy has bigger weapons, he is where we place our trust. And some of you in the battle you're facing, today's a day for you to remember that he is where we place our trust. Verse, verse eight, we gotta run. Psalm 20, verse eight. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. He is our strength and he is our foundation. He helps us to rise up by his strength, and he is the firm foundation on which we stand. Verse 9, Psalm 20, verse 9, says, Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. If you need to know one thing, it's this. Jesus is our victorious king. He is the one we look to. He is the one we trust in. Every part of this psalm, how real it was when David read it, when the people sang it, it was fulfilled in the person of Jesus, and Jesus has come to bless us in the midst of our battle. So can I ask you to do this? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? And some of you would say, Chad, I'm not in a battle. I'm not just in a battle. I know that I can't do it on my own anymore. For some of you, you knew that before you even walked in here today. Today was a day where you just needed to say, God, I need your help. God, I need your forgiveness. God, I need your grace in my life. I need you to be my savior. I need you to be my Lord. And on my own, I can't do it anymore. And today I need to begin or begin again personal relationship with you. If today you know that you need to say, Jesus, I I need you to be my king. If that's you, just raise a hand right where you are. In this room, auditorium two, wherever you're watching or listening to this, you just say, Jesus, I need you to be my king. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Anybody else? Could be the most important decision, stepping forward in your life you could ever make. Jesus, I need to make you my king. Father, thanks for the hands that have gone up for the people that have decided today, Jesus, you're my king. No better time than today. Lord, would you help them to know that these words, this prayer, it's more than just a a few moments in a church service, but God, that you're beginning a spiritual transformation in their lives, working something out in each one of us. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can I ask you to stand with me, if you would, please? And... uh, the the team's going to come and they're going to lead us in that song that we read from number six earlier the lord bless you and keep you 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 probably know it we're going to sing that together kind of make that our blessing but here's what i just want to ask very simply if you would say god i need blessing for battle like i need blessing for the moment that i'm in something we talked about today and you knew god was speaking to your heart i'm just going to ask you to step out of your seats and come and stand down here we're going to pray together I know that might be a a, a bold step for some of you, but here's the bottom line from scripture, and I really do believe this, that if you have a need for a spiritual experience, sometimes it requires a physical step. And so I'm gonna pray and the team's gonna start to sing, and if you would just say, God, I need blessing for the battle that I'm in. I need strength, I'm weary, I'm dreaming, I'm in a battle, and I need your help. I hope you won't hesitate, but that you'll step out of your seats and you'll come. Father, today we need you. And God, we need blessing for the places where you've led us and you've been speaking to our hearts today. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, would you pour out your blessing in our lives? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you need blessing today, would you come find a place to stand and we'll pray together here in just a moment. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
Lord speaking to your heart, don't hesitate. Come and join us. Move towards the center as you come. Let's make room for our friends. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. If you're not auditorium too, just come on down to the front. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing that one more time. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. It's time to sing it over your situation. Sing it over the battle you're facing. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Okay, here in this room, if you're in auditorium two and you've made your way down to the front, we're going to pray over some very just real specific things over these next couple of moments. And um, whether you're here or whether you're there, wherever you might be, if this applies to you, we want to pray in these ways. The first is this. We talked about he is the one who gives us strength. And it even said he sustains those on a sick bed. And so if you need a physical touch of healing in your body, would you raise your hand right where you are? You need God's healing touch, just kind of right where you are. Just keep your hands raised for just a moment kind of wherever you are. You need a physical thing. If you're near somebody with a hand raised, will you just put a hand on their shoulder? You don't have to look at their my chart. Just kind of put a hand on their shoulder and we're, we're gonna pray, okay? So Heavenly Father, we come to you. And Lord, we know that your word says you are the healer. That you not only forgive all our sins, but you heal all our diseases. Lord, that by your word, we know that by your stripes, we're healed. And that Jesus, when you were here, you went around doing good and healing everywhere you went. And so, God, would you heal today? Heavenly Father, would you bring healing? Lord, you know every need. God, you know every person. You know everybody. And Lord, you know how you could use some of these healings that through them others would see you and that they would believe and people would come to know Jesus. So Lord, would you do the miraculous and would you relieve pain and would you restore vision and would you remove what shouldn't be there? And God, would you strengthen? And God, would you heal with peace and encouragement? Would you give answers where they haven't been found? And Lord, today would you be our healer, our healer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, look, let's, let's keep going. He says this is a blessing for those who are weary. You, you've, you've, you've sowed in tears, and today you're looking for him to come through and bring that blessing. If you're weary, would you raise a hand? Anybody? You don't want to get weary in well-doing. This is not anything to be ashamed of. This is, this is a statement of, God, I need your help. So, Father, we come to you, and, Lord, we ask that you would remember sacrifices, that you would accept the prayers that have been prayed and the tears that have been cried, the good works that have been done. And, Lord, may we not get weary in our waiting, but may we see that every tear is a weapon, and, God, that every sacrifice is a step God, of serving you and offering to you and knowing, God, that you are working in those places. Lord, may we see a harvest. Would you help us not to give up? So we look to and trust in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, we also said, we saw there where he, where he talks about the dreaming, where he says that he can... He can make your plans succeed, where he can give you the desires of your heart. And if that's where you're at, there's new ground, there's territory for you, for your family, wherever it is. Will you just raise your hand right where you're at? You're saying, God, I'm, I'm dreaming, I need your help. Down here, if you're in your seats, in the other rooms, wherever you might be, just raise a hand. Lord, we come to you. 
Your word says you can give us the desires of our hearts. Lord, you know what the battle has tried to take from us. Lord, some of us desire restored relationships. God, and some of us desire salvation for those we love. And some of us desire to see you bless and prosper the things we're putting our hands to do. And Lord, some of us are chasing after success, not for the sake of success, but because, God, we know what we're called for. We want to honor you in these things. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name right now, would you bless the dreamers? Would you give them your strength and your help? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, one, one last thing before we, we, we jump back into the song. We talked about a blessing for those who wage war. This one's pretty easy. Anybody in a battle? If that's you, just raise a hand right where you're at. You know the battle that you're in. And today, God might be calling you to stop moping, start moving. <laughs> and today, God might be calling some of you to lift up a shout. It's time to change your words, change your mouth, change what you proclaim and believe what God's going to do. So, Father, you are the one who makes us victorious. You are the one who anoints us with victory. You are the one that we trust. We don't trust in horses and chariots, but instead, we trust in the name of our God. And so, Lord, our hope is in you. Lord, I pray for the one who's fighting a battle. Lord, would you replace their weariness with strength? And would you replace their doubt with greater dreams? And God, would you help them to see that even though they're in the midst of this battle, you are the one who is pouring out blessing in their lives as we trust in you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, here's two words we pull from scripture that we use sometimes. Have you ever heard the word hallelujah? You've heard that somewhere? You've heard it? Okay, and it has this word that has to do, we're gonna praise God. I think it would be good if we not just said it, but the Bible says we should shout it. Now, I'm not much of a shouter, but it might be kind of fun. You wanna try it? So we're gonna shout hallelujah. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. All right, that was okay. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three. I want to hear auditorium two, two. Let's hear it. One, two, three. Hallelujah. If you're watching online, time to disturb your neighbors. One, two, three. Hallelujah. So that's a battle cry that we give. Let me give you one other word. Have you ever heard of the word amen? Have you heard that word? We use it very commonly, but what it means is, Lord, let it be. So if we're believing for a blessing, shouldn't we say amen, Lord? Would you bring it? Father, as we lift this song, we sing this word, believing that the blessing is in your hands. Amen. Amen. Come on, every voice. Amen. 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 May his favor. Favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Come on, say it again. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Come on, lift it up. May his friends. Go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. Look at somebody tell me, He is for you, He is for you, He is for you. Sing that again, amen.
Okay, I want you to say this with me. Psalm 20. Go ahead and say it. Psalm 20. One more time. Psalm 20. Look at the person next to you. Psalm 20. Because tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and go, I should read that. Where was it? Oh, good. I didn't expect you to do that, but that was great. Where was it? Because you're going to need it. Look, can I tell you, and this was, this was different than the first service. When you're taking ground, I'm, I was never in the military, so I'll have to ask some of my friends here in a minute how this works, but doesn't it make sense that when you're pushing against the enemy and you're just about to take ground, something pushes back? And I sense resistance through that whole time we were praying. And you're going to sense it when you go back to your, not Sunday life, but your Monday life, right? And the enemy's going to push back and you need to pop your Bible open to Psalm 20 and you need to read that again and you need to read it over your house and you read it over your family. Somebody sent me a picture after the last service where they went back to a loved one's Bible. Psalm 20 was all marked up and names written in the margins. It's time for you to do some warfare with God's word. And some of you need to hold on to that and you need to go out and one of the weapons you can use is Psalm 20 and let God use that in your life and push back. Don't let him take ground that God intends to bless in your life. So Father, thanks for your word. And Lord, may your word in our mouths be a weapon that we can fight battles they're going to lead to so much blessing in our lives. Lord, tomorrow and the next day, when the battle's real and we can feel the enemy breathing down our neck, may we hold on to your word and may all your requests be granted and may you fill your people with strength and with your grace and with blessing. Well, thanks for your word today, how it works in our lives. May we go with your special favor and with your wonderful peace. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more time. Can we thank the Lord for his word today? God bless you. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.